I want to touch base a little bit about your strength cycle. Uh, we're going to be adding a couple things to it. Um, let's, I want to go back over what we're, we've been doing the last three or four months because uh, the cycle is going to continue on end of January and February, and I want you guys to be prepared for it. First cycle is this five, five, five by five essentially. Now, what you're trying to do is establish five RM. Protocol for doing that. First set should be 92 to 95 percent of your former 5RM, whatever they've established over time. Second set, 95, 98 percent. Fifth set, third set, ties your former 5RM. This is where the art kind of comes into it now. If you're having a really good day and your movements are good and all things are going well, then you might want to think of, okay, cool, you tie your 100%. Now, this set, this is your plus set, and this is a plus set. The way this works is, is that we've got a long cycle. You're supposed to make small incremental gains in loading. A lot of people that are new to a strength, like a disciplined strength cycle, early on will make huge gains, like huge big jumps, and then they'll slide back some. So what will happen is this. Just go by a, a small amount. So if this, if your back squat is 375, and you hit 375 for five, and then you go to 380, do five there. Things are good. Feel like you got more in the bank. Stay at 380 or go down. Save that for the next cycle because each cycle that goes you go through, you get a few more cumulative reps in. Does that make sense? You got to hope that makes sense because you can get any feedback right now. So week two, same thing, triples. Week three, doubles. So think about your killing amount of reps. You shouldn't be getting a whole hell of a lot of volume as far as loading goes. But if you're making small incremental increases in loading, consistently developing uh, all the musculature that supports the loading, um, if you make big jumps, what happens is your connective tissue doesn't keep up with, with what you can do neurologically and shit happens, you get itises and break things. So understand week one, week four is kind of an off week or a low volume week. You find that the Metcons are sometimes like shorter and a little more intense. Uh, there's some accessory work that goes with that. Understand is that this cycle is a 28 day cycle. Really, it's a three-week wave with a one-week kind of deload or, I don't know, whatever the, the, whatever the latest and greatest in strength and conditioning vernacular is. What I want to see you guys do is just follow this in small increments. Your guideline is mo no more than a 10-pound PR at any given time. Some of you guys are sliding backwards. Some of you guys have been. I would bet money you probably made early big jumps and then slid back some. Or... Uh, there's some other things that probably are going on too, but understand is, is that consistently exposing yourself to their all we've been working on um, and trying to figure a way of getting some more dynamic speed lifts into the programming. And part of it is, is that a lot of everybody you know, that are following the programming has consistent, doesn't have a consistent gym. Um, essentially, some of you guys have R4 racks, some of you have other things that are built up or whatever. Um, I, my assessment in this, my, my assumption, is that everybody has a pair of heavy dumbbells because when we did the dumbbell snatches a couple of years ago, everybody should have a pair of 70s or a pair of 100s at, in their gym. Um, so this is what we're going to do in the next cycle when I talk about dynamic loading. So if you're going to be doing a lifting, now think about this is that we're going to add some band tension to it. And so your weights that are actually in the bar is going to go down. And I'll show you how I want like that set up. I got it set up in here. And part of why the reason I'm shooting this video is so you guys don't want to understand. Now, what you can do is establish a 5RM with bands. Uh, the way I have it set up is about 70 pounds per, um, per side, per bands. It's about 140 pounds of band tension. And this is approximation. How am I coming up with that? And this is, I'm not Louis Simmons. I don't have a 40 years of doing this particular lifting. Um, because when I went to pick up the dumbbells and I get the tension, the dumbbell wanted to lift off the ground at 70 pounds on each side. So... Let's, let's call it 140 pounds of bad tension or 70 pounds per side or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Needless to say, calculating band tension is not precise. It's not like you're going to shoot somebody in the mail with a rubber band. 
rubber room, <laughs> send a man to the moon with a rubber band. But I want you to think of is that whatever the tension is, have the tension on the band being consistent. So in other words, how you set up initially. So what I have is this. Here's your barbell. Here's your rack that it's in. Here's your J cup. Comes down where this is. Now a band looped over and then put the dumbbell in the center of it, coming down right about here. So here's your dumbbell. I'm a fucking artist. Check that out. Gonna come in, come up. It's gonna have a little bit of an angle, a little forward pull to it. It's really gonna be really more fun and interesting when you do front squats with it. Uh, probably not gonna be able to do dynamic lifting with it with for overhead squats. At least I don't think it's a good idea um, for obvious reasons. Um, that being said, we'll come out and, do, and come back to the position there. So once you warm up, the first time you, you go through this, take a little extra time and figure out what your approximate. 5RM is with the bands. It may be whatever the percentage drop. The big thing is, is that when you're, you're using, you're using bands and dynamic lifting is to maintain bar speed and really kind of increase the loading so you can keep accelerating through the bar. You'll find a big jump in the loading that you lift if you, if you train like this fairly consistently. And I think you guys are ready for the next step here. So once you figure out what your band tension, how you're going to attach it, how you're going to anchor it, which we'll, I'll show you, then um, you're going to establish the 5RM. It may be tension plus 200 pounds on the bar, who knows? Whatever that is, but that's where your 5RM should be established. Same thing with your 3RM and your 2RM. Big thing is, is that when you come out of the bottom, you're going to rock it up. Some of you guys that have squat movement issues and depth issues, um, this is a great way of fixing it. If you have a, a double banded rack where you actually pull like an isosceles triangle and it angles upwards at the center where your bar is going to be, it's pretty cool. This, this kind of uh, backdooring into it with uh, a dumbbell can be helpful for you guys, and I think that everybody will be able to participate in that. That cool? I'll show it to you in a second or two. So the way this is set up one more time, I'll, try, I'll do a little better drawing. Here's the bar. Here's your beautiful J cup. There's your stand, looped over, and then through. And that way you can have tension all the way to the bottom.